All right, we're on unit two. This this one's going to be a chunky unit, just like the last one. we got a lot to cover in a short period of time. Now, I will tell you, in case you're like, I'm dying. In case that's how you're feeling, if you're in my class or whatever else, then you should know that after this unit, things slow down a little for a little while, which may be helpful, hopefully, maybe. We'll cross our fingers and see what goes on. So we're starting this, the, this unit or chapter or whatever you want to call it <coughs> is entitled Proof, right? It's talk, that's what we're first learning about. We, I've already been teasing that we're going to be talking about proofs and we're going to be doing lots of writing and all these things. If you haven't figured out by now, geometry, high school geometry at least, is in truth a cleverly disguised logic and reasoning class. Disguised with some pretty pictures along the way. That's really what geometry is all about. And this is really important because, you know, wait, people say, why do I have to learn this? Why do I have to learn how to diagram sentences? Why do I have to learn how to write? Why do I have to learn how to, why do I have to do math? Why do I have to learn algebra? All of these things, every single one of them are there to help you learn how to think and learn how to reason. We learn how to write because uh, the best way to learn how to think is to write. We learn algebra so we can learn how to reason through problems. We learn how to figure out unknowns. We learn geometry so we can learn how to reason and we can learn how to eventually debate and all those other things. Things. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the absolute core of thinking and reasoning and different ways to stretch our brains and all of those things. So that's what we're starting on this journey. Now we have some really foundational stuff from unit one. And now in unit two, we're going to be diving into a little bit more formality and some more vocabulary with thinking things. So this, this, um, Lesson, lesson one of chapter two is called inductive reasoning. So what is inductive reasoning? Inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a conclusion. That sounds like a lot of gibberish. So let's see if we can narrow it down a little bit. I like to use the acronym. Grab, yep, I'm in the right place. I like to use the acronym PIG to describe inductive reasoning. Okay, so I in in pig in this in this example stands for inductive reasoning. Inductive. I don't know if I'm into the next thing that's going to appear down here, but if I am, I'll figure that out. Now P stands for part, and G stands for general. I'm a little concerned that's going to be into some other words, but we'll find out in a minute. So what I mean by that is inductive reasoning. As to contrast, in a few in a few lessons, we're going to be talking about deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is the other way around, where we're looking at big picture stuff, like big a a we're using rules, big rules that have probably been developed through inductive reasoning, and we and we make claims about the individual things. For inductive reasoning, what we're talking about today is we're taking these parts, these individual examples and individual steps in a in a uh, plan or whatever. I'll give some more concrete examples here in a minute of, of using inductive reasoning. We take part, more specific examples, and we build a general rule. And those general rules kind of have a name. The general rule, oh, it was barely it. I think we're going to leave it. I think that's that's legible enough. I, I, I curved it just nearly the right time. From inductive reasoning, we can make a conjecture. A conjecture is a concluding statement, so a big overarching rule that can be used, that can become, we come to those conclusions, the conjecture, using inductive reasoning. So we're looking at different examples, or, or excuse me, we're looking at, yeah, specific examples to build a rule. So, what kind of things might we see in a math textbook with this? Um, this is again; these are these are ideas and concepts that you can use 
way beyond a geometry textbook. But uh, how might you actually see a problem like this? So you might be asked to write a conjecture that <coughs> explains the next uh, thing in a sequence. And you might have a sequence like this. We might have something listed. We might have this sequence listed like 8.30 a.m., and then the next next one, 9.45 a.m. And then 11 a.m. And then 12.15. Oh, that doesn't have an M on it. Try again. <laughs> 11 a.m. and then 12.15 p.m. And we might be asked to write a conjecture about the next term in this sequence, right? That might be one way we might see it. You've seen stuff kind of like this, right? When you're, it, like when we were doing linear equations and stuff where we were given a, a table of values and you were expected to just simply write the next term in the sequence. And you might have, like say in Algebra 1, you might have been asked to write an equation that describes the sequence. This is the same idea, except in this, we're usually talking about in words, so we're kind of looking for a pattern, right? Those specific examples in, if that we're using inductive reasoning on, they're, we're looking for patterns and we're, we're trying to find them. So in this case, we have a pattern. So for this one, this one we're going plus an hour and 15 minutes, right? And then that same pattern holds for all of these places, right? Every single one of them, we get this pattern. So we might write some, we might write a conjecture of something like the next term term <laughs> will be 1.30. Now, we're not really writing 1.30 p.m., I should say. We're not really writing full proof, but we while would often want to put air our reasoning. This is kind of a precursor to writing a full proof for something. We, we would want to say this, and we want to say reason, a reason why we say that. So what we would say is because this is not a formal proof, We'll, we'll learn more about that later. Because each term in, pff, struggling with that word. <laughs> That's exciting. Each tem increases by an hour, one hour and 15 minutes. All right, so that might be one type of example. Another type of an example, let's say, let's do one that's that's got more pretty pictures in it. So say the first, the first, um, first term in the sequence, first example, right? If we're using, going back to our definition, is maybe something like this where it has one, two, three, four segments. And then the next term in the sequence might be something like this, where it's got this, that, the other thing, that one, and then another one down here, and that one right there, and one right there, and one right there, and one right there, and one right there, one right there which now that guy has 10 segments, has the original four plus one, two, three, four, five, six more. So now it has 10 segments. And then the next term might be something like this. You may already see where this is headed. Something like you may have already internally used some inductive reasoning to figure this out already. But let's see if you if you done did. And then we add this. Boop. <laughs> Which that one has 18 in 
in the in its in its day. Let's let's do another one because these numbers are are not quite lining up well enough that we can really clearly see what's going on necessarily because we've got plus six and then plus eight and hmm. Let's let's. I think you're seeing the pattern. Let's see if we can figure out what's going to go. Let's let's do at least one more, maybe two. In the in the sequence, so we've still got this basic baby one, and then we're going to add some more, and then add some more on there, and then add some more on there, and bloop, blap, bleep. This guy has 28 in the sequence. That's maybe a little bit clearer on our pattern. Let's go this that one more, and then let's see if we can figure out. <coughs> let's see if we can figure out uh, what's gonna happen, uh, and then we'll see if we can write use some inductive reasoning to figure out what the what the next term of the sequence would be. So we've got our four, we've got our ten, we've got our eighteen, we've got our twenty eight. And then we've got, how many is it going to be? What do you think? What's it going to be? What is the next one? You could count them if you wanted. Or you could wait till I tell you <laughs> that it's going to be 40. So let's see if we can see what's going on. Let's see if we can use a little bit of reasoning to figure out what the, what the trick is happening. What the trick is, is going on here. So this one, we added six to get to the next one. This one, we added eight, plus eight. This one, we added plus 10, hmm. This one, we added plus 12. How many are we gonna add to get to the next one, you think? Well, let's see if we can go one step further on this to, to clarify this and concrete it all down for this example. So, if we go and we find these increasing, this one's increasing by two. This one's increasing by two. This one's increasing by two. So this one's probably going to increase by two as well. So we might, <coughs> we might say something like the next figure. There are various, these are, like I say, these are not very, for, these are not particularly formal. This is one conjecture that we could make about this shape. You could make another conjecture that says the lines will get more and more squiggly. We might need a little bit more evidence to prove that, but we, you, you might could make some other conjecture like that. So we could say the next figure We'll have fifty four segments. Because each figure. increases by the we could say maybe the previous this is not a great this is not super well written proof language but by the previous increase plus 2 it's not great, but it, it gives us enough to get what's going on and, and with all the things happening. And again, the more the point is, this is what we mean by inductive reasoning, where we look at specific examples and then we write a rule from that. Most of this class will not be using inductive reasoning. This, and by the way, you know, oh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, when, when, he's, when he says, deduction, you know, he says, I deduced... I'm using, basically he's saying he used deductive reasoning. In general, he's actually using uh, inductive reasoning. Just throwing that out there. He's pulling out different 
different evidence, specific examples to make a rule of that dude killed that other dude. So induction, my dear Watson, it doesn't, I don't know that that has as quite the same ring to it and whatever else, but that's inductive reasoning, taking examples, making a rule from it. We're going to be using things that have been built with inductive reasoning to do a bunch of deductive reasoning. I'll see you in the next one. If you're one of my students, thanks for joining me. I'll see you in class. If you're not, thanks for, <coughs> thanks for joining us. Hope these videos are helpful. If they are, let us know in the comments. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe and all those things. We will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.